Hello guys, good morning. Uh, yesterday in the steel structure design we have discussed about the compression member, what is the column, what is the stanchion, why the column is used, why the stanchion is called, what are the strut section we have discussed. Then we have gone through the IS codes, various, uh, IS 800, various criteria that are mentioned for the design of a column that is the compression member. We have discussed about the effective standardness ratio, we have discussed about the effective length of the column, effective slenderness ratio of the columns in the frame structure we have discussed. Then we have gone through the IS code specifications given in the IS codes. Then we have dis uh, discussed about the how to calculate the design compressive strength of a column. Design compressive strength of a column we have discussed how to determine. Then we have gone through some examples and next we di discussed about the how to, what are the general principles for the general design steps for the design of a column then we have and also design an example so um, uh, today we will go into some other part of design that is the design of a strut member what is a strut member i think you basically know the strut member is a member which is generally provided in a column uh, in a uh, truss section to carry the compressive load the strut member are generally double angle or single angle section so if it is a single angle section if it is a double angle section the design procedures are somehow different okay in a single angle section in a double angle section the design procedures today we will be discussing about that now coming to the first design principle of a single angle strut section now if we see clause 7.5.1.2 in is code it gives the design principle of a single angle section this is the 7.5.1 single angle strut section the uh, in this code it is uh, assume that the single angle strut section will be connected to the gusset plate by its one length and another length will be free so this is the basic first criteria that we had to we has to clear so one plate one leg will be connected to the gusset plate here so then if it is the case if one leg is connected to the gusset plate that means the load is coming to one plate on one leg only then the effective standardness ratio will be based on the following formula the effective slenderness ratio will be based on the following formula as I have also give it in my code. So there are some factors K1, K2, K3, lambda VV and lambda phi. First coming to the K1, K2, K3 these are the constant depending upon the end condition that is what is the meaning of end condition that is the what is that connection that we have used. So if you see in table number 12 the constant K2 so we will see it depends upon the number of the bolts in each connection and number of the, and the condition of the fixity number of the bolts. So to determine the number of the, the K1, K2, K3 we, we need to determine the number of the bolts in the connection. So first condition is that to design a single angle start we have to first determine how many number of bolts are required to connect the section with the gusset plate then based on that we will determine the value of k1 k2 and k3 also fixity means how the gusset plate is connected to the member how the gusset plate is connected to the angle section it may be a fixed section it may be a hinged section for that k1 k2 k3 value also differs then comes the value of the lambda vv and lambda phi this are the value of lambda vv and lambda phi here a relative uh, term is there which is a term is being specified here which is rvv you can see a term is there which is the rvv this rvv that means the radius of the gyration about the minor axis where from to calculate it it is in given it is given in ISSP6. If we see in ISSP6 and in the angle section, if we see in the ISSP6 and in the angle section, angle section, then we can see the RVV value. The RVV value is given here. We can see this is the value of RVV. So if any angle we select, we can determine the value of RVV. We can, I can put the value. Then depending on the value of RVV and all the values here, we can all the values are specified here. What is L? What is B1, B2, T, epsilon? What are the all the things are specified here? This is the for the single angle case. Now coming to the double angle connection. If it is a double angle connection, so double angle connection are generally of 
two types what are the general double angle connection first one is the as per clause 7.5.2 now coming to the clause 7.5.2 this is the clause 7.5.2 first one is the double angle discontinuous strut connected back to back with the gusset plate that means this connection is like this one if i if i can draw it here like this if this is the gusset plate this is one angle and this will be the other angle so this is the first case where double angle discontinuous struts connected back to back in this cases the effective length of the or the, the k the effective the slenderness effective length is k into n so k value here will be taken as 0 0.7 to 0 0.85 so in double angle connection no need to calculate the effective slenderness ratio clear then comes the second case for double angle discontinuous strut connected by one or more bolt uh, strut gas, um, connected by gusset plane in one side that means the in this case the diagram will be like this if this is the gusset place this will be the one angle and this will be the other angle this is the second case in this case that formula the 7.5.1 so 7.5.1 this is the normal formula that will be calculated okay now the, uh, then for the single angle section we have the, uh, after we have calculated the lambda e we will be calculating the fcd this is the design compressive stress the design compressive stress will be calculated from the normal formula so that we have discussed earlier in the column design that is the normal formula which is what which is this formula FCD. This is the formula for calculating the uh, design compressive stress. Uh, here, phi term is that, and here alpha is the imperfection factor depending on the table number seven. Table number seven is here. Table number seven is here. We can see it if it is table number seven. The alpha depends upon the buckling class a b c and d see this is the alpha so we'll after putting all the value we can determine the fcd that is the design compressive stress of a strut member okay now these are the general design guidelines now coming to a math first we will do a math in the double angle section then we will do the math of a single angle section first the double angle section here in the math it is given the load is high 135 kilonewton length of the strut is 3 meter two angle placed back to back with two legs connected with two legs connected means two legs uh, with two legs connected means this type of connection will be there so for that cases uh, angles are placed on opposite sides of the 12 mm gusset plate so opposite sides of the 12 mm so this is the thickness 12 mm thickness and this is the angle sections are placed so for that case first as per the design steps we have to first assume either the slenderness ratio or the fcd that is the design compressive stress now if we assume the design uh, here we are assuming the slenderness ratio to be 120 why higher value because the amount of the load is also higher so 120 will be the slenderness ratio then following all the things angle section buckling class c why buckling class c we know if it is a angle section then always if it is an angle section always the buckling class c will be taken if we see the chart of buckling class, if we see the chart of the buckling class, now for angle section, always the buckling class for angle channel and T section, for angle channel and T section, always the buckling class will be any class will be C. So for C sec for correction, buckling class C, KL by R120 and FY250 for FY, F6, uh, FU410. We form 9C for table 9C. If we see from table 9C, that is the design compressive stress for the buckling class C. If we see for 120, this is the value of 120, we can get the value of 250, it will be 83.7. So we are taking the value to be 83.7 here. So 83.7 has been taken. Then the cross section area step 2 AE is equal to AG is equal to U by FCD 133 1612.9 millimeter square. Now, as it is a double angle, we have to assume two angles in such a way that the combination area of the two angles should be greater or equal to that. We are first taking a section to be trial section to be 75 into 75 into 6. So the total area provided is equal to 1732 millimeter square from the IS code. So if we see the SP6, that is the section 75 into 75 into 6. So if you see the section 75 into 75 into 6, 
if we see the section 75 into 75 into 6 this is the section 75 into 75 into 6 if we see the total area is 8.66 that is the 866 so total area is equal to 1732 also now we have to check what is the minimum radius of gyration as it is a double angle section so no need to determine the effective slenderness ratio we have to determine the slenderness ratio in the normal conventional way so we have to check what is the minimum radius of gyration so our minimum so first we have to check in the xx direction then yy direction so r minimum what 65 into 75 into 75 into 6 for that the value of the r minimum is the value of the r minimum for 75 into 75 into 6 20 is the value so you have taken the value now a very important thing as it is a double angle section for double angle section are uh, for calculating the placed back to back with 12 mm spacing R Y Y will be different because two angles are connected together by a gasset plate. So R Y Y is the least radius of gyration in the Y Y direction will be different. This will be based on so for a double angle back to back the value of the R Y Y will be somehow different. Now the value of the R Y Y for a two double angle back to back depends upon this factor that is the distance back to back of the angles this is the thing page number 99 from here we can get the value so distance back to back of an angle so here the back to back distance is 12 mm because the 12 mm is the gasset place distance so for a 12 mm so if it is 1 0 0.0 centimeter that is mm 1 10 mm and this is 14 mm so 1 point two will be in between of that so for isa 75 into 75 into 6 so this is the two value that we require so the value will be in between of that so taking the value of ryy for why we need to calculate the value of ryy sometimes the value of the ryy calculated by this mechanism can be less so always the r minimum to be calculated so a check has to be made so here the r minimum is the 23 so r minimum 23 now for double angle section back to back another thing we have to consider that is the another section we have to consider that is this thing that is the for double angle plus back to back the slenderness ratio the value of k will be 0 0.7 to 0 0.85 for this type of case so here we are taking the value to be 0 0.8 so for 0 0.8 we are getting the value of kl by r104.35 then for buckling class c fy250 mpa and lambda is equal to 104.35 then we can calculate from the similar chart by interpolation the from interpolation from the this chart from one uh, 250 that is the 101.07 from this chart we can calculate the value of 101.07 then pd that is the design competitive strength will be equals to ae into fcd that is equals to 135 kilonewton so 135 kilonewton which is uh, 175.05 kilonewton which is greater than the 135 kilonewton so which is okay so this is the first design of double angle section now coming to the a single angle section here the single angle section Carrying a load of 65 kN, length 3 meter, connected with a gasset plate by 20 mm, 4.6 plate load, di diameter of the gasset, uh, dimension of the gasset plate, 12 mm thickness. So, step 1 first, we have to assume either the standardness ratio or the FCD. Assuming here the FCD. In the previous math, we have assumed the standardness ratio, now we are assuming the FCD. Now, in the design, procedure we have uh, in the design procedure of column we have discussed that the that is uh, fcd should be in between 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 now if the load is uh, uh, on the higher side 65 is a very higher load so taking in the value of 0 0.4 fy 100 mpa okay now depending on so always the angle of the buckling class c so buckling class so buckling class c fcd is 100 mpa now the required a will be pu by fcd this is the formula we are getting a 650 new millimeter square now assuming the trial section to be isa 65 into 65 into 6 now check now see if 65 into 65 into 6 is sufficient or not
so ISA 65 into 65 into 6 now if we take ISA 65 into 65 into 6 that is the ISA 65 65 6 we are getting a area of 744 that is the 744 millimeter square we have written that 744 millimeter square now the single angle section we have to determine if we see in our notes that we have to determine the value of k1 k2 k3 so we have to first design the connection that is the number of the bolts we need to determine so number of the bolts how to determine the number of the bolts i think you all know from, uh, um, now that first we have to connect consider the bolt is in share and in bearing so this is the formula in share this is the formula in bearing i have done all the maths in the class you know that so two values are coming in single share in bearing so the lesser value will be taken so number of the bolts coming is two number so coming to the chart coming to the chart that is given here so if so if uh, coming to the chart so we can see that for number of the bolts here is two and consider now a boundary condition condition to be fixed uh, has to be fixed if the gusset plate and the angles are fixed together or hinged together we are taking the gusset plate is fixed together okay assuming fixity at the end that means the gusset plate are fixed with the connection so fixed connection this is with the value so values are there now r lambda uh, so r vb from similarly from the issp6 we are calculating the value of the for 25 into 25 into 65 into 65 into 6 we are calculating the value of rvv so this will be the value of 12.6 will be the value so we are taking the value of 12.6 here 12.6 uh, here calculating the lambda phi calculating the lambda uh, vv then calculating the lambda e then calculating the fcd from the following formula alpha uh, buckling plus c alpha will be 0 0.49 given in the code in the code this, this has been given the value of alpha will be 0 0.49 for buckling class C where we can see that 0 0.49 then we calculate the value of the FCD now here the FCD is 61.0.61.0.0948 so if we multiply with with the A we are getting a value of the design composite strength less than 65 kilonewton so the design has failed so the redesign will be required so this will be your today's assignment design the member taking trial section as isa 17 to 17 to 8 with 8.3 kg per meter so in the assignment we will redesign the member taking the trial section as this one okay so up to this this is the design of the angle start section now in the next lecture we will be starting about design of built up members now these are the normal road section where the load is lower so now sometimes there are load will be higher for that uh, built up sections are required so today uh, the next lecture we will be discussing about what is a built up section and how does it how what are the design procedure to design the built up section okay thank you for your